Right, we are Seth, Brandon, and Lauren. <laughs> we thank you for this opportunity to present about a simulation with multiple tanks. Uh, we have, over the last semester, become familiar with the process control simulations. And we realize there's a s various concerns involving the levels of various reservoirs, which we will address today with a four tank simulation presentation. Thank you. Okay, this is our four tank <laughs> This is a joke for you. This is our four tank simulation. Oh no, this is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got four gravity train tanks. Um, we have two pumps on each side, followed directly by uh, a valve for after each pump, and the valves are open 20% is what we did during our simulation, meaning 20% of the water flows directly into the lower tanks. Remaining 80 flows into the upper tank on the other side. Oh, uh, the FO, uh, so we did various tests. We did an FOPDT, which we tuned um, to get a PI controller. And then we also did a first principles model um, using state space to get transfer functions. And then we put those th things into a Simulink uh, in MATLAB into a Simulink loop to simulate the process. And so, so from the beginning, we were able to take the manual control MATLAB that we were given and do a doublet test on that and then fit it, as you can see. And we were able to take those values, the tuning values, and plug them into, next, ITAE and IMC correlations. And as you can see in red, the ITAE came out quite large and the values were very large and it also oscillated quite a bit and was very aggressive. Whereas on the other end of the spectrum, the IMC in green were a lot more conservative and got us to our set point a lot more efficiently and a with a lot less error. And so we also did the first principles model, which we put into state space and then put it into MATLAB and it gave us out uh, four transfer functions and as you can see they're actually the same ones just mirrored. Uh, so it's a symmetrical system which makes sense uh, that the, the transfer functions would be the same. And we just put it into our Simulink uh, and made a, a control loop. And you can just see how we have it set up and it just feeds a constant tank level into in centimeters into a PID controller which feeds into a, a transfer function that has a saturation limit because the tank only has so much space and then it feeds it has a feedback control loop on the two inner loops or the two inner transfer functions and then the scope just gives us graphs at the end. So we found really we kind of expected after the first principles model we were like oh well it should be just like a symmetrical system right same pump both the valves are over 20 percent but we really saw that after doing probably quite a few doublet tests we did because we wanted to verify this, but it really wasn't symmetrical. We were getting different parameters for both the pumps. And so that caused a difference between our FOPDT simulation and our first principle simulation. So one was simulating it as if it was symmetrical and the other was not. We found different responses for those, obviously. Um, we, to do with F FOPDT, the IMC obviously we talked about was way better. ITA, we just threw it out because it was just, we couldn't even make it work, we couldn't tune it anything. Um, the, so we had the given files that were the non-interacting, and then we made the one that was interacting that Seth just talked about. Um, they both had good responses from what we saw. The, when we used the interacting PID controller system, and we plugged in the first principles model transfer functions, and the transfer functions we got from the FOPDT, the FOPDT ones were better, and we feel like that was because they didn't model it as a symmetrical system. They like actually went with the response to the pumps, but we didn't know exactly what that was. So that one responded better. And the first principles model, not as good, but still pretty good. And then we had them in MATLAB, so let's go to the next one. Mm -hmm. So this just shows, I'm gonna come up here and point a little bit, if that's okay. Sorry, Seth. 
Okay, so here, this is just our PI controller non-interacting, and this is just with the tune values from the FOP T transfer functions. So we can see here, levels out pretty good, and and like a little bit of offshoot and a little bit of oscillation, but nothing terrible. We thought this was pretty good. This is our fine-tuned one. And next, this is our interacting PID with the FOPDT transfer function. So these are the non-symmetrical transfer functions. And that was pretty good. There's less overshoot here. The graphs are different, I know, but there's less here. And then it also uh, has less oscillation down here, and it gets to the set point faster, which was good. Um, these have different set points. This is our interacting PID controller system with um, different set points and the first principles model transfer functions. So still pretty good, but you can see more oscillations, obviously. And and so we realized that it is a complex system, which actually makes it an interesting system to, to look at because of the interactions between both sides. You have to account for it, and we did that by using a feed forward control and the, and the interacting PIDs in both the first principles model and, and the interacting PID with the FOPDT. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, even though the, the first principles model is more complex and you would think that intuitive, like you might think it might be better, in this case it didn't yield a better result. That could have just been because of mistakes on our part or and, and it's just one of those cases where the simpler model works better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we were going to do it again, we just decided we would focus the first principles model only on the level of the bottom tanks, just because we didn't really care as much about the top. And uh, I think that was kind of it. Those are what we learned. That's our Do you have any questions?